Hopefully it's going to be okay. All right. Now, today, this is what we are going to talk about. Um, ba -ba -ba. Text functions and um, directors and fields. We'll talk about those, okay? Text, uh, text files. Uh, library functions, I'm just going to go through them quickly to tell you what they are. Uh, we might, we talk, I talked about it and to ask you to go through it, please. <coughs> I don't know if you, if you did that or not. But um, essentially, um, what, what we said that, like standard input output header file that is for input and output, there are so many different libraries in C language that does many things. Um, I would say that any algorithm that you know, any standard algorithm that you can think of, there should be some kind of a library for it somewhere. For example, standard lib, standard library, it has lots of uh, stuff that is very helpful. We're going to come to it. And the other, the other one is math library. Uh, things like, you know that there's, there's, not, there's, there's no operator for uh, the power of, you cannot say 4 to the power of 6, you can't have such a thing like that. That is a math library, and it's actually a function called POW. That's not prisoner of war, it's power. Okay? So, it's, so, um, and uh, you have uh, um, functions that return absolute value of stuff. If you don't know what absolute value is, don't worry, you can find out, and then you'll find out what that function does. Okay? Returning absolute value of things, and one of the good functions that it has called rand. Rand function essentially creates a pseudo random number. A pseudo random number is a number that is between certain number. So essentially, you mention to it, I want a random number to get created between this and that, and you essentially ask it to give you a number between this and that, it gives you a random number. But the random number is not random, which means. Every, if you run it again, you will see like you, you start the program and the first random value is 25. And the next one is a random value that goes up. If you put the program and run it again, you get the exact same number. So it's not really random, okay? To make it pseudo-random, which is essentially making it as random as possible, what you need to do is to start the seed of random number generator. Now, I'll tell you what does that mean. That's SRAND. So it's like a for loop. You write a for loop, it starts from one, right? And if you repeat this for loop over and over, it always starts from one, right? But if you, for example, somehow get the time of the machine and start your loop when, with what time is it right now, then the loop will never start from the same time because time always changes, right? The random number generator is like that. It's an algorithm that creates random numbers, but it's, it needs the seed to start. If the seed is always the same, the random numbers remain the same. But if you give it a different number every single time, then really you're going to get random values. Therefore, if you call the SRAND function and give it the current time, that is time that's an, that's an integer number, that is the number of milliseconds since 1970, okay? I don't care what it is. It essentially, it returns you a, an integer value that is never the same. Every single time the program runs, a new time is going to be there. Because of that, the random values that you're going to get will be actually random. If I have time, we're going to go through it, and I'm going to give you examples on that, so you'll see. So this random number generator is a cool thing. I actually <coughs> had a... I... Uh, <coughs> Once I put that challenge and I said, uh, write a program that uh, draws a couple of dots on a screen with dashes and pluses and uh, you know, the numbers. And if you can write a program that sh shows a couple of dice and every single time you roll it, it's going to be a different number, then I'm going to give you yada, yada, yada. But one or two people could answer that the question. Yeah, right, writing a dice by the guy by itself to run one is very fine, it's very okay. And you can actually display it. But showing two of them side by side in text 
is extremely diff difficult because everything gets drawn from top to bottom, right? To actually show two guys together side by side, that's a difficult part. All right? But it's, it's fairly easy. We'll go through it. It's not very important for now because today I have to leave early. Um, I want to focus on uh, text and uh, records and stuff like that, text files and records and stuff like that, and then we're going to come through this and I'll explain it to you. Um, in next few days, again, I'm going to have, I don't know if I told you guys or not, I'm going to have a session, then I'm going to start the program from scratch, a storage and retrieval program designed from the beginning uh, to keep records in a file, search through it, find it, and display it and stuff like that. A complete program from the beginning to the end in detail with user interface and everything. If I can finish it in one session, it's, it's going to be one session, otherwise we're going to make it two sessions. But it's a good thing for you to see how the program is actually being developed. How do I think? What do I design first? When I think of writing a program, how do I approach it? You are at the stage right now, if you go through all the stuff that I talked about, that if somebody actually writes a simple program, it's not simple, it's, but it's a complete program that is semi-simple from beginning to the end, you kind of get an idea, how should I attack my problems when I'm actually designing the program? Okay. Later on, I'm going to get system analysis courses, three of them, during your study to actually learn how to do it. So um, it's not an easy thing. Okay. So I'm going to let you know what the session is going to be. It's going to be on big blue button, and it's going to be probably from nine o'clock at night till twelve, something like that. And it's going to be boring to the bone. Uh, uh, geeks going to have fun. Other people going to fall asleep. Um, if you join, I'll be happy. I'm going to post it to <coughs> both classes to join, and we'll see how things are going to happen. All right. Uh, so, again, we're going to go through these things later on. Today, again, what we are interested about, uh, text files, records, and fields. I'm going to quickly get over text files so you see how easy they are. It's just... There is no need to teach it, actually, because you're already doing it. Every single command that you're running with scanner and printer, you are reading from a file, and you are writing into a file. The file that you're reading from is keyboard. The file that you're printing on is monitor. That's it. There are files, no difference. The only difference between a file is that file is not crazy like a human being. It cannot go bananas when it's entering the information. The good thing about a file is that you can actually see what are the information coming in, and you can plan for it. If a human being was the same person, was a nuts, and when you ask it to enter an integer, really entered an integer like a human being, that would have been beautiful, isn't it? No validation needed or something like that. So you do still do validation when you are doing, dealing with a file. But you don't go with as a... Uh, as a, a true, uh, what do you call it? Um, see, it's, brain doesn't work at this moment. I, I need a reboot. It's not bi-directional. If you're not asking the person to enter something, if they throw them, then you're going to ask them again and do things like that. In a file, you keep reading. If you can't read the file, you stop and say, file is corrupted. It's the responsibility of the person who create the file to go back to fix it, not you. You're not going to ask for it again. Okay, that's a good thing about the file. So it's load off your shoulders. If they give you a bad file, you simply say, well, bad file. I don't want it. And you're going to say, why? Because I couldn't read this image. Okay? I'm actually doing it in your submitter. In your submitter, I'm actually take, capturing your output, and I go through the file. I don't bother to ask you to do it again. I simply tell you where the problem is. By the way, your submitter is changed, if you notice. If you submit something right now, it's much more comprehensive. It actually checks the due date, tells you if your assignment late or not. Uh, it, it actually points out because I thought that I'm gonna just give you technical things like the, the the characters that don't match are ASCII code and this one and that one. And nobody ever bothered to look at the ASCII table, so I wrote the ASCII table. So when you actually miss something, I literally say you typed space. I write that one so you actually see that you type space so you don't have to go to ASCII code, ASCII table and see 32 is actually space. Or when you were supposed to print the new line and you didn't, I'm going to say new line. I'm not going to say 
his character, 10 or something like that. So, or tab, I'm not going to say character 8, I'm going to actually say T-A-B, tab. So it's easier to understand how things are, and it's much more English, so it's not like, Professor Zappot is, I'm telling you, you were supposed to type this, but instead you type this, so you actually see what's going on, okay? Uh, that's that. So try it, because I know no other class has it, I'm just using it, I'm testing it, so you're kind of my guinea pigs. Take a look at it and, and try if you see if there is any bug or anything like that, let me know, please, okay? Uh, so you are using the beta version. <laughs> what were you saying? Don't worry, it's still. Oh, actually, and you get confirmation too. So you can. It asks you, want to get a confirmation of the submission? If you say yes, it actually sends you an email telling you that the, the assignment is submitted. Because lots of people don't like it that it says, thank you, your work is not submitted, it's not enough for them. They want something more tangible. So <laughs> I send an email back to the person telling that it's like that. So that's that. Files. I told you that you read from a file and write from a file and are standby. I'm not kidding. The file that you're actually reading from is called standard input. The file that you're printing on is called standard output. Really? So if I have an integer over here, A, I can use the file scanf, say actually, uh, or, or file printf, can say f printf on standard input, standard output. And write, please, enter an int. Then I'm going to say f scanf from standard input and read an integer and put it in address of a. Then I'm going to say printf standard output and I'm going to mention, what do I mention? And I'm going to mention. Uh, the number you enter is percent D, go to new line, and I'll put A over here. Okay? So that's not printf, that's F scanf. So F, essentially, printf that you are writing is calling function F printf putting the standard output. Because they were too long, they wrote a function, they called it printf, and it literally calls this function. When you do scanf, it calls this function and puts standard input. So your scanf is like that, all right? So it's something like that. That's not true, but it's kind of, I'm just telling you to be happy. Okay, but that's kind of, kind of pseudo truth <laughs> these days. It's fake, fake news. <laughs> anyway, so, but, but if I run it, you'll see that it actually works. It, yeah. Oh, that's a new version of scanf. Scan it. Is it better now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, you'll see it actually runs and the thing comes up and, and it's going to say enter int. I'm going to go 23 and it's going to say the number you enter is 23. So it's essentially getting from standard input, which is your keyboard, and standard output, that is your monitor, it just prints up. Are you okay with this? Welcome to the files. That's it. Yes. Pardon? Yes, I'm recording. Recording, hopefully. It's a new software I got from school, so if I don't record, you can blame school. Anyways, um, are you okay with this? Okay. Yeah. That's your backpack? Okay. Backpack. Okay, if you want to put something to it, what do you do? Open And after you put it, what do you do? Close That's it. You should remember that about files, and that's it. You know files. That's what a file is. If you want to put something in a file, you open it. And after you're done, you close it. If you don't close it when you walk, everything's going to go everywhere. So you don't know what's in your file anymore. It's as simple as that. All right? Don't worry, I'm not contagious. I'm taking antibiotics, and I'm very good. Tomorrow is going to say I can't come to school and coughing. Anyways, are we okay? So let's call this, not that. Let's call this 01 file. Let's see. Okay. The input of the file is not an easy thing. Like, the file is on a hard drive. It has size, it has sectors, it has schmigly dingies that you don't know what they are. Okay. 
because of this fact, to be able to handle a file, they pack all the information that they want about the file and they put it in a what? When you want to pack information in and see what do you put it in? Into a structure, right? So they actually created the structure, they call it a file. It's not actually a file, it's a structure. Okay? <coughs> so what do you do? <coughs> but it's a structure that is type def, so you don't need to type struct. You just say file. So if I want a file, if I want a file, I have to actually say file, it's all capitalized, and it's a pointer. And I'm going to call it FPTR. It's a pointer to a file. Okay? Now, if you want to open the file, you say this FPTR should hold what FOpen opens. And what FOpen opens, look at that. It says file name and the mode that you want to open it with for, right? So I'm going to say open, say file. Let's call it what? Output.txt. You love that thing, right? It's <laughs> Output.txt, and I'm going to say open it for write. For writing. Okay? If it's FPTR, it's better not FTPR. Okay. Right? Now, what I need to do is this. I had an integer somewhere. Int A. So I'm going to say 4, i, set to 0, i less than, I don't know, 20,000 and i plus plus, printf, oh, i, okay, I change it to i, <laughs> printf, uh, I don't know, pers uh, percent d, and go to new line and show the eye. If I print, if I type this, what's going to happen? It's going to print it all on the screen, correct? I don't want it on the screen. I want it to be printed on <laughs> FPTR. So I'll call it FPTF printf and I put over here FPTR as we did standard output. So it's essentially printing it to that one. If I do this, I'm going to have a corrupted file on my hard drive. Why? Because I opened the backpack put stuff in it and did not close it. Okay, remember, usually like when I was a little boy, I used to immediately close it after open and then fill in the blanks to make sure that I don't forget closing it because it's very important to do so. <coughs> so, in here you say F close and what do you close? FPTR. That actually puts the things that are supposed to, so when you write in a file, it doesn't actually go to the file. Hard drive is a very expensive thing to write on. It's a physical thing. It has to write. It's very slow. If every single time you are writing an integer, it actually writes in a hard drive, your program can go very slow. So what happens is that uh, the, the, lang the, the C language is written, and all the languages are actually written in a way, and our operating system is written in a way that when you actually write in a file, it won't write in a file. It keeps it in a buffer. Until it reaches to a space that is worth it to write. Okay? As soon as you say close at least, no matter what is the size, please write. Are we okay with that? So I'm writing 20,000 integers over there. Okay? So if I run this beautiful program on my own, what's going to be the output? Nothing. Because I wrote a file. It's on a hard drive. So now if I actually open it, you output that TXT is right over there, and these are the numbers, 20,000 of them. Yeah, there we go. Are we okay with this? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's less, less than 20,000. 20,000 is not going to be there. Aha! Yeah. All right? Are we okay with this? Any problem with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, so that's how we write in a file. Now, how do we read from a file? Okay. Now, I'm going to change the name of that output.txt because I see fear in your faces. So I'm going to actually call that data, data.txt. Okay. Now, if I write over here thousand of them, what's going to happen? You're going to have zero to 900. 
Yeah, but what happened? Uh, actually, this is uh, I changed it. So let's let's first write the twenty thousand. It's twenty thousand. Let me run it. Control F five. So that runs. The file is created. Okay. So if I look at it, it's there, and I do not want that output file to be there anymore. So I'm going to delete it. Okay. So if I would look at that at a txt, it's twenty five twenty thousand things in there. We know that, right? Now, what happens if I do this and run it again? But what does it do? So it writes from thousand, and the rest still there, yeah. or it's going to yeah. wipe the old one. Wipe the old one and wipe right there again. That's something that you need to make sure you understand. I only know this is the output system, right? So if you write a file, it's, it doesn't open an already existing file and wipe over it and let the half page. It first wipes the old one, creates a new one, and wipes in that one. Writes W by default. That's what it is. Are you okay with this? Are you okay? <coughs> However, what you can do is not to wipe it out, but add to it. Okay? So now I can do something like this. And write another one. Right? Is that correct, actually? Is next just going to the is the next going to near the end after one iteration? Yeah. So what what am I doing actually? No. See my brain doesn't work anymore. I oh, want from here I'll that. go one by one. Trying to go from 1,000 to down. No, this is actually, I'm going from oh, no, minus, I go zero, I go up to minus 1,000, right? It's less. Yeah. That's correct, right? I think that's okay. I don't think it's less. Well, I is still better than negative 1,000. Yeah. So, if I run, we'll see. We'll find out. If the program doesn't stop, it means. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I run this program of mine, then this is what I'm going to have. Uh, what does it say? Oh, because I had data.txt open, Visual Studio is telling me that something changed that thing outside of the program. Okay? You want to reload it? What does it say? Reload? Is that what it says? Yeah, I would say yes, please reload it. Now if I look at data.txt, you'll see that it actually went backwards up to minus something. Are we okay with that? So that's append to actually add afterwards. So, so I'm going to actually do like this. I'm going to put up W over here and say, what do I say? I say uh, overwrites the old file with you. New or opens new or creates new. Okay? Are we okay with this? Problem? How do we find that? Because you may have some kind of a memory shaking thing in your computer that you set to be write to text. Right? You can have a memory stick that is write protected. If that's the case, then how do we find out that it failed, could not open this thing for writing? This is how you do it. A pointer by default is what? It's an address. An address has a, what is a valid address? Positive value, right? No, zero is an invalid address. There is no such thing as zero. Nothing starts from zero. That's why you have to always check it with that. And say, for example, if FPTR, if you are from kindergarten and you actually write it's not equal to null, you can do that. Okay, but as soon as you do that, they know that no, it is not a very good C program. Okay, because in C we know zero is false, false and anything but zero is true, true right? So, so I said not equal. I should have said equal, but 
you can do this. So you can, like, you will see this everywhere. So if not FPTR, they do that. So if it's zero, it becomes true, right? They put that one in front of it just to check to see if something is okay. <laughs> you see, you will see that a lot in C language, but let's uh, have the kindergarten version for now. So it means if it's equal to null, and if you want to really be a geek, you can actually do this. Cast that null to a file pointer. Not that file, a bigger file. <laughs> to make sure that the types are the same. Okay, you know what casting is, right? Remember, temporarily changing the type. You can say, I want the FTT. Now, if you do that, then I say, oh, that's a key. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so what happens over here is this FPTR is set is, is the same thing. If you don't put it, compile it with casting and tell you anyway, but writing it like this is like, I know that this is a, you know, it's sort of like power, okay? But anyways, if you don't do it, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, so that's okay. After this, you simply do what? You do <coughs> printf. Now, if you work on systems that are standalone systems, not like Windows, okay? Like if you are writing a program, C program, on a machine that only your program is running and the OS, there is no visual studio, it's not a multitask thingy. There is actually something like this f printf standard error. <laughs> There's actually something called standard error that you can print on. That means where the error is going. So if you're writing, working on a, on a, I don't know, a mainframe that mainframe has a console that specific the error messages go over there, it's going to go there. For us, we just print it on a screen and we get over there. So it's going to have to be printf. Uh, I'm going to say file um, not found. Or could not open file. Could not open file to a pen. Okay, I can't open the file to a pen. And then you and then you exit the program. How do we exit the program? The hospital over here right return. I'm gonna meet them with a baseball bat, okay? Don't do that. Always add an extra level, which means right over here. Else now do your stuff. And of course, I only need to close it if it got open successfully, otherwise just silly. Right? Now it's the same we are opening it and see if it actually works or not. Now let's try something. Let me go over here and say, okay, I want to delete that data.txt and run this beautiful program of mine. Yeah. Now let's take a look at the... So now we know, quite frankly, I forgot, I want to test it. <laughs> now we know, when you actually open for a pen, if the file doesn't exist, it will gonna, it's going to create it anyway, right? I was going to ask you about that. Will a pen just create a new file? Yeah, it will create a new file if it's not there. Okay, so append, create, or append. So, I should, uh, so it's going to be create or append. Create or if exists uh, a pen. Okay, are we okay with this? So opening it with an A is a good thing to create in logs, for example. If you're writing a program, you want to generate a log of what and what thing happens. A log file is a good example for an append. You keep appending to the log file. Yes? Is it possible that those things are together? Yeah. You write two lines. <laughs> no, no, it's one function at a time, my friend. That's a true C programmer, somebody who's lazy to write an extra line. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the computers are there because we are lazy and our brains work properly. Most of us. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. Are you okay? So now we know how the file writing thingy works. Now I'm going to uh, 
what do I do? What do I do? I'm going to call this 0, 1, 0, 2, files.c. Which reminds me, did you get the notification you have a quiz tomorrow? And yes. Quiz tomorrow? Yeah. Two quizzes, five and six. Five and six. So take a look at the notes that I sent you, see what's inside. That's what's going to be the quiz of. Okay? <coughs> oh no, so what you want to ask? Like, history of Canada? Like, who Pierre Elliott Trudeau was? <laughs> <laughs> it's C programming, what can I do? Although it wouldn't hurt you if you know the guy, but hey. <laughs> Anyways, are you okay with this? No, let's do scan it. Let's read from a file. So if I want to read from a file, how do I do it? That's pretty simple too. So essentially you open the file for reading. You open the file for reading, but the good thing is that because the file is there, and I can actually take a look at it, I can see what the data is in there. So I can actually write a proper thing for it to read through it. Okay, over and over. I don't need to keep telling him, enter this, enter that. I can't do this. All right? So what do I do? Oh, what do I do is not to close the file. Uh, but anyways, so I know that I have one integer at each thing and a new line at the end, so life is beautiful. I'm going to open it as, as reading could not... Uh, open the file uh, for reading, okay? And then in here, what do I do? Now I have to keep reading from a file, right? So I have to say f scanf from fptr, read an integer and put it in something. Let's call it num. Why keep I, why keep talking ftpr? FPTR. <laughs> FPTR, yeah. Percent D, and I'm going to put address of no. So I'm actually putting it over there, and let's just print it, okay? So I'm going to say printf. So I'm going to say printf percent D space, and in here I'm going to say num, and I close the file, and in here I'm going to say printf new line. So what's going to be the output of this program? What is the, what's going to be the output? Oh, I, I, sorry, I should have uh, showed you the data and then asked you that question. What's going to be the output of this program? Pardon me? Zero. Wait, zero. Zero. Yeah, it's going to be zero. That's it. Just going to put one zero. Because I read one file, one thing. Lots of people think magic. No, it doesn't. It's not magic. If you read one, only the first one is written in the file is closed. Okay? If I want to read out of that thing, I have to do a while loop. Remember a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away, I told you what scanf returns? What was scanf returns? Huh? She's too busy with her notes over there, so I'm not going to ask her. <laughs> what's what does scan return? Oh, like the word. Oh, yeah, here, that's a smart thing. He, he doesn't give me any answer, but it's the right answer. What does scan return? An integer. Perfect. But what is that integer? <laughs> no. Close Okay, you forgot. So that's going to be your test. Pardon? Zero or not zero? No. Okay. Bad people you are. <clears throat> so, scanf, percent D, percent C, percent LF, and then I have ampersand A, ampersand B, ampersand C. This scanner, if successful, is going to return one, two, three, because it's read three things. If it reads the first one and the second one and fails in reading the double, then it's going to return a two. If it only reads the first one successfully and not the second one, it returns one. If it fails to read the first one, then it returns perfect nothing. No zero. zero. It returns zero. But it also returns 
minus 1. Minus 1 is what? Hitting the end of file. Okay? EOF. We have null N U L L at 0. We have capital E, capital O, capital F as end of file. But I have to show you something. I'm sorry, this is not going to be in the recording. Because you can't see me doing this. Anyways. One, two, and three. So I have uh, four steps I'm from the full, from the wall. Okay? How many steps? And assume that I can't see the wall. How many steps I have to take to know that there is a wall? Four steps. Four steps? Four. One, two, three, four. Do I know there's a wall? No. No, I need to go like five. You got that? You only get the end of file if you hit it. If you just get to the end of the file, nothing's wrong. File is still okay. So the reading has to fail to return a minus one. Are we okay with this? Yes. What about flat? What about? Flat. So I don't know. Who's flat? Canada? <laughs> <laughs> no, the zero is minus one. That's the logic that you can put. There's nothing to do with what the scan of return and the concept of end of file. The concept of end of file means you read, 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 read. If you can't read it, there are two possibilities. <coughs> Let's put it this way. Let's put the scan in a loop. <laughs> how do you know the file is corrupt? And how do you know it's end of file? If scan of return is zero, you stop because it wanted to read something, it couldn't. That means, what? I mean, what? That means it couldn't read. Halfway through the file, it was something bad. Therefore, it stops, so you say file was corrupt. Right? But if you read, 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 and it returns minus one, which is EOF, it returns EOF, you actually check it with EOF. If it returns EOF, then, it's end of file. The data is finished. Done. Okay? So, if I write the thing, I have to do something like this. So I have to say int result. And I'm going to put the result in the scatter. So I'm going to say result is set to this. Then I'm going to say do. Do read, please. Okay? While. Okay, so I'm going to keep reading while what res is not equal to zero and res is not equal to EOF, right? Pardon me? Or, uh, actually, and. If it's over, it's gone. It's out. You're trying to confuse me. No, 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 no. You wrote four instead of and. Yeah, you should write an answer. I think if res is not equal to zero and res is not equal to zero, anything else is OK. Come on. Those aren't <laughs> that is four. Those aren't yeah. Those, you wrote an or. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you see how sick I am? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> I keep saying and and writing all. Yeah. My apologies on that. Okay. <laughs> I need some water, man. <laughs> so, but if I run this, what's going to happen? So let's run it and see what's going to happen. Three years later, four years later, come on. So it's going to stop, but take a look. Analyze as a program. Read every single number. No, no, just read the last one. <laughs> Look at the last one. What do you see? Negative. Double negative. No, negative nine nine nine, right? Yes. What's before that? Negative nine nine nine. Huh? How come it read the last one twice? It didn't. It's on the five. What happens is that it reads the last one. It reads the where am I? It reads the last one. Okay? Then it prints it. 
it's not zero, comes up with, tries to read it again, it fails. Num is still 999. So it prints the last one twice, then it stops. Therefore, after this, I have to have an if statement. So I have to say if res is zero, or res is not equal to one. No, res is zero. Res is zero, it means it couldn't read the thing. Then I'm going to say printf file is bad. Fix it. Okay? I could be I could be a nice person say after this number. <laughs> so they know where the problem is. But if you're a jerk, you just put it like this, let them go through thousands and thousands of records to find out what's wrong with it. Okay. <laughs> but it's a good idea to actually say file is bad after the number. Okay? And you put the last one in, percent D. And you put over here num. So the last value that it read that was successful is going to get printed. Are we okay with that? All right. Okay. Else if. That's where else if comes through. Res is, set, is equal to EOF. And if that's the thing, print of, do I print anything even? I don't know. End of data. Usually you don't print anything. But I, otherwise, if all those did none of those happen, then do the printf. So the printf at the end won't happen if any of those two happen, right? Now please look at what I'm writing. This is the <laughs> core of reading from a file. Now this is only one that over here. I could have an employee with 50,000 stuff, not 50,000, 50 records. So I have a scanner that reads 50 things. Okay? So keep that in mind, all right? <coughs> it doesn't make any difference. So, are we okay? All right. I'm going to give you an example with records soon. So everybody's looking at it as if uh, I'm writing in like ancient hieroglyphs or something. Are we okay with this? I'm just having a okay. That's what I'm reading. First, I'm gonna check if the file is open successfully. If it's not, I'm gonna say, hey, the file's bad. To just get out. Okay. If I couldn't, if I could the file open the file, life is beautiful. I come inside. I start reading and see what scan is returned. If scan is returning zero because it was one. If it was two of them, then I had to write a different logic. But because it's only one, it can only return one or zero, right? So I'm going to say if it's zero, let's say five, that the file is bad after the number yada yada. So I'm going to tell them where the file is at. Then I'm going to say, where is Then I'm going to say otherwise. Look, to see if it's end of file. If it's end of file, then say that is finished, done. If none of these do happen, then I actually write successfully. Print the number three. Okay? Are we okay with that? So now if I actually <coughs> run this program, hopefully, after it runs, it's going to say end of data, and I'm going to have only one 999 over there, as you see. Not two of them. It's just going to say it's end of data, right? And let's make the file back. Okay? Can I make the file back? <coughs> What do I do? So let's open data. Here we have it open. I do? Oh, yeah, here it is. So in here, I'm going to say, hello. OK, I just added something that is not an integer. Are you OK with this? Now I run this program. File is bad. Oh, actually, let's go to new line. And so I'm going to go to new line here. And I'm going to go to new line just to make it look better. <coughs> now it's going to say file is bad after 26. Fix it. So they're going to go actually take a look at the thing. They're going to look for 20. Oh, there we go. Which, which idiot wrote hello over there? They remove that, and it's going to go. Are we okay with this? Problem? Yes. Question? Suggestion? Section. Good? Yes. So I'm going to do a lot of statements. 
Oh, by the way, this is your class. Yeah, you were saying? No, so I'll say under the one statement. Um, maybe uh, what, what happens if you say res equals to minus one? After you say res equal to minus one? No, no, res equal to minus one. Under the actual statement. After this? Yeah. Is it the same thing as saying uh, res is one? You are saying after the while, while, I say res is equal to minus one? No, not after the while, after the f Oh, you mean in here, I would say if it's not equal to minus one? No, no, no. Is it the same thing as saying, so like when you define uh, f equals to minus one? Uh, sorry, res equals to minus one, is it the same thing as saying? Closing it? Yeah. No, you're just setting a variable to minus one. You have an integer, you're setting it to find out what it has to do with a file. That's your flag. Yeah. You told me how do we use a flag. That's a flag. Okay. You set the flag to minus one. It has nothing to do with the file. Okay. okay. Questions? Suggestions? Yes. If the end of the file is, end of the file is defined as negative one, correct? It's not actually negative one, but yeah, let's say it's negative one. It's actually f f f f f f f f f. Oh, no, so you were saying? Uh, if, it, like if in the while statement we just uh, say, if we just uh, check if res is greater than zero, would that also work? I'm sorry, he's laughing at Why? I'm gonna ask you. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> that hexadecimal f f f f f f all ones is minus one. Okay, no, <laughs> because of, anyway, so. Instead of checking if both, uh, instead of checking if res is not equal to zero and if res is not equal to e in the file, do we just say res is greater than zero? Yeah, but even yeah, mm. yeah, we can do that. Yeah, oh. yeah, of course. There is no one way of doing something. It works if you do it that way. This is <laughs> more descriptive. It's telling to the person who's reading, why am I stopping? Okay, I could say, yeah, if Fred is greater than zero, life is beautiful, and, you know, you know, yeah, you could do that. I'll show you 100% right, I could have done this. Yeah. So what he says is that, why you are writing a, a statement like this when, when you can simply say, right? But again, we know that it's because of this, <laughs> okay? Because I didn't want it to be in the file, and you'll see soon about that rest thing. So this works perfectly too. And um, <coughs> run it; it's going to be the exact same thing, no difference, okay? Um, next thing I wanted to say was let's uh, let's do this. Uh, so that data thingy that we have, can I rename it here? Properties? Now nah, forget it. Um, so that data thingy, I'm going to change it to <laughs> okay? So I changed the name of the file. Now I'm going to now I'm going to run run the program again. This time I'm going to get what? Could not file, open the file for reading. So if you're opening for reading, it has to exist. Otherwise, it's going to fail. Are we okay? Are we okay? One. Are we okay? Two. So I'm your favorite files. This is just I just showed you how to read from a file, how to write into a file, and I put single digits over there. Now I'm gonna <coughs> start talking about uh, technicalities that you need to know about C language as you're going through this. So you're okay. The loop that you see, the logic that you see, so essentially start or read, check the result, do your process, go to the next record. Please look at this thing intelligently. This applies to all sequential file reading that you've got to do in, in your entire life. There is no magic behind it. It's just this scan is more complicated. Probably it's a function that is reading a structure. Okay? And this, I don't know, I don't know, writing probably is going to be an employee getting printed in a certain way. Are we okay? One. So, okay. <coughs> Parsing the file. 
How do you parse a file? What do you mean? What do we mean by parse? Uh, parse in my language is actually so parsing, but it's, yeah. To get data from the file into immutable structures or data source integer types or variable types. Okay, to be able to traverse through the fields of a file properly, read the file and interpret it one by one. A file is not always an integer. Let's go through it. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, <laughs> first, let me behind the scenes look at something. I'm going to pause recording. Let's print the data file. <laughs> I'm, re I'm repeating. Okay, right? So, uh, in resource files, I'm going to right click and add a new item. And in that new item, I'm going to, let's call it a uh, uh, package data.txt. Uh, files are not named that way usually. So package package data.txt or package dot that. I'm just coming up with names. There we go. And it's a text file. Utility, it's a text file. It's putting txt after. Anyway, so okay, it's package.txt. That's what I want. <coughs> A package that you have that comes usually has a name, like it's, it's contains something, right? So, so it contains something. It contains something. So first, it's going to have a name, right? So I'm going to put over here Coke, okay? Um, and uh, what else? Uh, dimensions. Uh, let's say we're going to put the dimensions as double, so it's 12, actually, no, integer. So 12 inches by 8 by 12. That's the dimensions for it. And let's say how much it weighs? Uh, 34 kilos. Ah, that's lots of coke, but hey. <coughs> 34, 4.5. I go to new line. That's what a record look, record look like in a file, a text file. So the next one is, <coughs> come on, give me something. Uh, nothing? Shoes? Shoe? It's going to be uh, 4 by 12 by 4. I don't know why I'll do 5. And it's going to weigh 0 0.3300, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, uh, 340 grams. So that's what's going to be. So give me something else. Come on. Uh, I'm going to write that something at the beginning. So this one I'm going to put. Um, seriously, see my mind's going blank. Give me something that has a name that has two things. Uh, apple pie. Wow. <laughs> Apple pie box. <coughs> it's let's say it's a big one, twelve by twelve, but just two inches. Uh, okay. <coughs> okay. And it weighs how much? Like uh, one point one kilos, one point two kilos. So I can keep going, but you get the idea. That's my file, right? Are you okay with that? So for that, if I want to actually read that file, what do I do? First, I save it. <coughs> Let me save this. <coughs> As 03, files.c. So I'm going to apply the exact same logic, people, for you to see what I'm talking about. OK? Uh, let's put this one. Now, in here, I'm going to say open package. It was, I said package, right? Package.txt for reading. OK. Could not print, uh, could not open file for reading. And then I'm going to say else do scatter. What am I reading in here? Let me just, what I'm reading in here. Let's take a look. Wow, too big. Let's go over there. Uh, come to the other side. So, I'm going to need character name. That is what? 41 characters, let's say. 40 characters. I have double width, double uh, length, 
double height what else and oh those are ints not doubles nobody says something those are ints int and int and then at the end I have a double right double weight now if I want to go through this this is what I'm going to do my scanf has to have those stuff so open package for reading and then go scanf fptr now in here I'm going to go percent what can somebody tell me what do I put over there to read that name if I put percent s it only reads apple not the pi. Remember, space is a delimiter for. Pardon me? Yeah, so. Score, and then what inside? Just like. So, 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 so let's go. Percent, square bracket, carrot, and then what do I put over there? Backslash n. Don't blindly follow stuff. What is? What does it do? It means read up to backslash n. You want to read up to backslash n or you want to read with and hide and stuff? You want to read up to what? Comma. Bad people. Backslash n. <laughs> comma. And then you say, pass the comma. It bypasses the comma. Now read an integer. Pass the comma. Read an integer. Pass the comma. Read an integer. What do I do? Huh? Pass the comma and percent LF. Right? Now in here I'm going to say read what? Name. Right? Address of... Uh, what am I reading first? Uh, it's width and, uh, width and length, right? So, um, was it width and length? Yeah, width and length. So, width... Uh, length and height right and then weight address of weight and then I stop right so now in here I have to say print because I'm lazy I'm going to just copy that so I have to print that so I'm going to say printf Now I don't need to put that comma shmama thingy. I'm going to put over here percent %s because percent %s prints everything and the rest remains the same and I go to new line. I do not need addresses for it. Right? So essentially I want to dump that file that I got on the screen. You, know, like you can format it and do all the good stuff. Let's actually format it. I'm going to say percent. So name is left justified, right? Name, I'm going to put over the 20 characters for it. Uh, so that's, that one should be not 41, 21. 20 characters for it. Then percent uh, 2D for that, 2D for that. Oh, hopefully we're not going to have anything 99 inches. That's a big package, right? So I'll put a zero beside it to fill it in. Actually, no, don't let not this stuff. Then for this one, the weight, I think, uh, um, two, one digit after the decimal point is fine. So I'm going to put, like, it's going to be what? 20 kilos, so I'm going to put uh, 2.20 kilos, so that's 234, so it's going to be 4.1 uh, LF, and voila, I'm printing it. And now my friend's logic actually works over here. I don't need to change anything now. <coughs> you follow that? If it's greater than zero, keep going. Is that correct? No. If it's greater than zero, don't keep going. You're mistaken. Now it has to be exactly one. One, two, three, four, five to keep going. And here I said if res is zero, wrong. If res is not equal to zero. five. See, scan is reading five things. It's successful if it returns five. If it returns anything else, we are in problem. Are we okay with that? I just wanted to give you this example so you know. So if this is equal to 5, life is... Oh, not equal to 5. 
See, that's the thing. Now the logic has to change because EOF is not equal to 5, 2. So I have to say res greater than 0 and res not equal to 5. Okay? Uh, file is bad and fix it after this. Okay? And I'm not, I, can't, I can't say fix it after this. I, I have to actually put this. I have to say file is bad. Read uh, after the following record. The following record. Okay? And then in here, I'm going to do the printf. Show what is the last successful read. Okay? And I have to make sure I put some values over here. I'm going to say, uh, in here, I'm going to put uh, empty. And with, I'm going to put minus 1, minus 1. The reason I'm doing this is that if it fails for the first one, they know it's the first one because all the values are nuts. Okay? Minus one. Are we okay with this? So now it actually reads it. If it's it, if it's greater than zero and it's not equal to five, we are in trouble. If it is EOF, then it, end of file. If it is, and keep going while res is actually five. Right? Now it keeps going. So. So hopefully this is going to read the the data. Well, let's try and see if it reads it or not. It looks okay. Does it look okay? What's wrong with it? Yeah. Why are there so many spaces over there? Can anybody tell me why there are so many spaces over there? Why are there so many spaces over there? Pardon me? No. Analyze it, please. Minus twenty yes. No, just that was just the width of the. That was just the width. It it wasn't going to the. See, it is supposed to show it like this. Why is it putting extra lines between them? Nobody noticed that? Seriously? Look at this. It's like wide open. No, no, no. That wet thingy that is going... Oh, you're saying why is why is it not aligned properly? No, we just thought about the wet. Why is it not aligned properly? It is supposed to... <laughs> that I'm surprised about. Where is it? Let me see. Percent. Left justified 20s. Yes. I don't know. I'll find that one later. But let's one problem at a time. Let me see. 20 spaces. Then print the comma for heaven's sake. Oh, I know why. I think I know why. Do I know why? <laughs> we'll find out. <coughs> we'll find out. Okay. Are we okay down to here? Uh, yeah. Because the scanner is capturing all the backslash ends in the file. Because the file will also backslash. So what happens is this. I'm saying read, so this is the first record being read. This is where you can actually start walking through this. So I'll press F10, and three years later, I'm going to go step by step. This is too big. Let me just make it a little smaller. I think once I made it this big just for example, and then it went bananas. So let me just, 24 is too big. 20, even 18, I think it's fine. Yeah. So we're going to come over here. First one is going to be red. So I'm going to come right down over here. Res is five. Life is beautiful. Name is apple pie. That looks like. Right? Width is 12. Correct? Length is 12. Height is 12, uh, 2. And weight is 1.2. So everything is good. Right? Now I'm going to go to the next one. Definitely none of these happen. Comes over here, prints the output, res is 5, goes back up. I look at here, this looks okay to me. Are we okay? Now, I'll read another record. Is this okay? What did it read? Where did that new line come from? It was at the end of the previous record. Because my scanf says read up to comma, 
when it actually wants to read, it reads anything but comma, which is backslash n. So backslash n is rec two. So I have to flush the rest of the stuff out of the thing. So we can actually write actually a, a flush thingy over keyword flush that we have. We can call it record flush. <laughs> we can do that. So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm doing it on purpose. It can be fixed much easier. I'm not doing it on purpose. So I want to go to the end of the record after I read everything properly. So what can I do over here? I'm going to say, I'm going to do something like this. Void flush record, right? For what? For a file, correct? FPTR. Are we okay with this thing? Do we need anything else? No, that's it. So all I need to do is to get character one by one until I get the backslash and stuff. Right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say uh, while I'm going to say int ch is set to the uh, function to read to get one character. What do you write? What was the name of the function? Don't get this character. The other one. We know scan. I can write F scan for scan. See, I know that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get one character from keyboard? Get card. Get card, right? Get cat. Okay? Now, so get, we have the equivalent for that one, so I can say F get C. I don't know what is F get care. Huh. I don't think, I think F get, yeah, F get care. Uh, F get care is like get care getting from standard. That's just crazy. But anyways, F get C, and I'm going to get it from FPTR. So I'm going to say get that one, uh, and I'm going to say while. Actually, yeah, do CH is set to. Well, oh. F get F get C F P T R. So F get C gets one character from the file and returns it. I'm gonna say while C H is not equal to backslash n. So that essentially flushes <coughs> one by one. Are you okay with this? F get C returns what? E O F as it reaches to the end of the file. Okay. If I want, I can actually do something with it so it gives me that too. So, so I can actually make this thing responsive. Say I'm going to actually return an integer, and in here I'm going to say uh, uh, return ch uh, ch. So it, it won't, I can say return ch. But then it's going to go to an endless loop. We have to uh, check. I, I'm not going to do that now. Let's not get it complicated. It's it's good for now. Okay. So this is what I have in here. And then after each read in here, I'm saying uh, record flush or flush record FPTR. Okay. So after each record is read, it's going to keep reading until it gets hits backslash n, and then it stops. And this is what I'm going to do at, in the output. See that? So I ate the backslashes at the end. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? One, two. Okay, let's do another thing. So that's one way. Let's try something else. I, I want to know if it works or not. So instead of this, what if I just put backslash n here? Will it work? Yeah. What did I do? I said, remember that when I put the actual thing, it passes it? So I said, read up to comma, pass it. Read up to comma, pass. It keeps going. And when I get to the end, I'm going to say, pass the backslash n. Okay? 
So the backslashing at the end of the record is bypassed. Therefore, it's not in the it's not in the buffer anymore. It kind of eats it and throw it away. Why everybody's confused? Are we okay? Anybody over here who's confused by this backslashing at the end? No. No, no. It's exactly like this come. What is this thingy doing in here? It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, no, no, it doesn't delimit at all. Hey, attention. What is this, what is this, what are these commas doing here? Why do I have a comma within these two percent these? Separate. No. Because of scanf is uh, it's basically just reading from the input stream, so it's basically capturing all of the uh, data that you mentioned in the stream. So because it's a format on my file, I'm saying read one integer, and there's a comma over here, right? I have to take skip it. When you put a, this is a scanf, not a printed. It's not going to print anything. Any character over here you put, it has to match. If I have a dash over here, it's going to fail. Because it expects a comma. You follow? So I'm saying read a string up to comma, skip the comma. Read the integer, skip the comma. Read the integer, skip the comma. Read the integer, skip the comma. Read the double, skip the new line. Therefore, I'm not going to have new line in the buffer anymore. I like that one better. Though. I'll tell you why. Yes? Why are you saying they skip the comma? Because there's a comma in the file. I want to skip it. Yeah, but what is what are you saying in the code like you know, skip it? Let's not skip it and see what happens. So that means when you put in this. No, no, no. That's so you the computer. Remember, whenever you think about a code, you have to be dumb as a doorknob and try to follow the code exactly as what it is. You are scanning. You say read up to comma, right? So what do you read over here? Apple pie. Apple pie. Yeah. Do you read the comma? Do you read the comma? No, not the No. Then the next one says what? Parsing integer. Is comma an integer? No. It's going to fail. It won't read it. I have to tell to scanner to read the damn thing. Otherwise, it's going to just stop it. OK? So my question is like, how? Knows, like, you have to read the commas, like, I have to read Because it matches it. That's how it's defined. Oh. That's okay. how, that's how Scanf is programmed. Scanf is read that if you put a character just by that, that doesn't mean anything. It means in the field it's reading, it has to match it. If it doesn't match it, it fails. Which means if I do something like this in here, see what happens. And save it, of course. And do like that. Did it run? Why is it not bringing it up? There you go. File is bad after the following record. Fix it. Coke. You see that? It read the Coke and it get to here. And you see it comes right over here. Right At 12 it stops. And it can't read the rest of the stuff are garbage over there. <coughs> are we okay? So we read this one. It read this one. You see 12. 8, and then it wants to read the next one, 12, fine, but when it comes to 1.2, and it's supposed to change to 30.5, it can't read it, so the old, good old 102 is remaining in there. Are we okay with this? So in this case, like, we don't have to write anything to tell the program, like, skip the commas, we write it down like this, the program knows how to skip it. Yeah. Okay, because we So you have to match it. Somebody's going to tell you, I have a file that is, has records in it and I want it to be read. You look at the file and you create the thing accordingly. You have a string, you read the string. Then you have a comma, you skip a comma. If it was a tab separated, then you have to put backslash keys beside these. If it's a comma separated, this is called comma separated value. It's very common in, in programming everywhere. Okay? <laughs> Now, I want to do something. I hope it's not going to freak you out.
Are we okay? The record that the data file has changed? Okay. Freeze everything perfectly. So what happens is that when you put backslash in, it actually flushes at the end. That's what it is. It doesn't matter if it's one space or not. Okay, save. And I think we're good. So this is how we read records. Any problem down to here? <coughs> yes. Uh, did, you run the, did you run the program with the flush record function again? It, uh, when I looked at the output, it didn't look like the program executed uh, properly. You think so? Oh, maybe because this thing. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, so you want you want me to run this? Oh, it stops at that one. Uh, let me see what is it. It's it was it was an endless lever, endless loop over here because. So what is hanging it over there? Let's see what is hanging it. So I'm gonna come right down to here and run it. So that's the first one. Now the second one. Okay. Now I'm gonna read the third one and go in here. Read character by character. Go out. Come down over here. Here. Print. Come up. Ah, because I flushed the record without checking to see if I have to flush the record only if the read was successful. I flushed the record without read being successful. You actually found a bug in my program. Thank you. See, when it comes over here, now it tries to read. It can't read it, right? So reading was failed. Therefore, file is in a failed status. So this is going to fail too. It's never going to get to anything. That's why it's going to be an endless loop. It keeps failing. That's the part that I said over here. I have to check. You see this CH? Look what it is. Minus one. I have to check that. If it's minus one, I have to stop. I didn't do that. Okay? Because it failed before, it tries to read the character. It can't anymore. It failed. Therefore, it stops. So I have to say CH if uh, do if CH is not equal to backslash, not equal to EOF and ch is not equal to backslash n. I think this is going to be fine now. Right? Thank you. That was a good thing. I could, I could, it's a good idea not to put the flush over here right after. To put the flush where read was successful. This is a better pro type of programming. Why do I have to have the function call with, when I know that the read was not successful? Right? So if the read is successful, flush the record. Flush that. Maybe and then continue. So let's have two, two versions of this. So I'm going to say, I'm going to save this one. I'm going to say 0304 read with flush dot flush dot c. Okay, and I'm going to save the other one. Save the other one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Save the other one with the backslash n without a flush. And that's going to be read. <laughs> let's see. Okay, so that's that. Uh, now, pay attention. I have six minutes to do this, so please. I know I didn't give you a break because you're going to have a break at the end of the uh, class. Okay? So, you see all these? Right? Look what I'm going to do. Struct package. And I'm going to put all those things in here. Definitely, I'm going to remove all the assignment stuff.
All right, so that's my structure. Now I want to read one record from a file. What do I do? I'm going to write over here, int read file. Yeah, int uh, read package from a file. So I'm going to put the file pointer in here. I'm going to pass the file so it knows which file it's reading it from. And I'm going to pass a struct package pointer in here to send the information back. P. OK? Now I'm going to just come down here, get the scanf of mine, copy, bring it back up over here, paste, and return it. And in here it's going to be packages name, packages width, packages length, and packages height, height, and packages width. Because it's a pointer, it's going to change it up there. Are we okay? Any problem with this? And then, so we don't need this in here anymore. In here, I'm going to have struct package uh, item, let's call it, whatever. Okay? I'm going to open that thing. Instead of this, what I'm going to say, I'm going to say res is set to, re what was the name? Read package? Read package from FPTR, and I'm going to put over here address of item. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Okay? Are we? All right. Next thing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the print over here that prints this stuff. Copy. And here I'm going to have void print package info. And in here I'm just going to pass this struct with it, but it's a constant one. I don't pass it just like that because I don't want too many information to be passed. So I'm going to say package pointer p again, but it's a constant because I just want to print it. And I'm going to put that print statement here. Now I can put thousand whistles and stuff, put this one as s and separate this as a bar like that, a bar over here, a bar over here, a bar over here, and new line let it be. And in here, it's going to be, again, the exact same thing. So I'm going to have package, 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 packages wait. To make it beautiful, I'm going to create a, a title. Not a title. What do you call it at the top of the list? Uh, header. header. Okay, there you go. Header. And I'm going to print a header. How do I print? And it's a void. I don't need to mention anything. And here I'm just going to copy that. So printf. I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So they're, they're going to be 20 like that. OK. Then I'm going to put, say, this. Then I'm going to print. Next one is percent %2D. So two of this and another one and two and another one, and two, and another one. How many do I have? And then I have a four for the float thingy, right? One, two, three, four. Then I go to new line, correct? Right? And I go to new line. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to do this, copy this exact same thing, uh, go to insert mode. Oh, no, not that. So I'm going to say in here, name, put a dash, put a, put a bar over here, and in here I'm going to say width, and then I'm going to say, uh, it's the first one width, then it's length, then it's going to be uh, height, and what did I do? OK. And then I'm going to put weight. And I have four for that. So I'm going to put weight. All right? And I'll go to new line. So that's going to be the header of my printout.
All right? Are we okay? So now we are good. I'm going to come up over here and write at the thing before I go to any uh, reading, uh, before this do statement, I'm going to print the header. Then I am printing the item. So this one's going to just print the item and tell what, what is, which one was wrong, what was wrong with it. So I'm going to say in here, print, uh, print package was that? What, what did I call it? Print package info. Oh, somebody tell me how to type. Okay, print package info. So I'm going to say print package info. And I'm going to pass address of item to it. No worries. It's constant. It can't change. And I'm going to have that one over here and put it over here. Now I have, now <clears throat> my program is in a structured way. I have everything about a package inside that thing, inside a package. So it, it, it works the exact same way, but it's in a structure format. And when I run it, the outcome is going to be the same. Not much of difference, but it looks just nicer. Right? Now, to make this thing better, that's 0, 05 uh, dash uh, IO, FIO with struts dot C. Now, the best way to do this is to actually take these and put it in a header file called new item. package.h and I put all the prototypes of package uh, package related functions right in here all right this one needs step C remember I told you never include anything in a header file here you have to because file is not specified so actually you have to actually mention include standard input output header file So it understands what the file is. Please add the things later on. We're going to add the uh, safeguards later on. I'm just showing you how it's modularized. I save that. Then I'll come over here. And I'm going to have a new item. That's package.c. And I'll get all the... stuff that I had for that one in here. So these are the, we don't need the struct. All I need to do is to say include package.h. Because package.h has standard input output, file is already known. Save that. And then I'll come back to my main program. And what I have in here is simply include package.h and we are done. All right? This is a modularized program that I wrote to read packages from a file and display it. All the information, all the information that I have, functions that I have relative to the packages in a package uh, and everything else seems to be in order and fine. The only thing I need to do over here is to add safeguards over here, which is, if not define, SICT underline package, underline H underline underline, copy it, change that thing to define, and get this beautiful, oh, Uh, define and get come come down over here. X and put it down here, and you are done. You have to say you have a safe header file. Okay, and save it, and done. Are we okay? That's it. Records, structures, and everything are written that way, and it's. Pretty simple and straightforward. Go through this again, please. Uh, we have a quiz on this next week. Okay?
from now on, that's how I'm going to get the quizzes. I'm going to tell you from which notes. I'm going to go from there and take the questions out of the notes. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? I put an alarm and it did not sound. It was supposed to sound at 2.55, but it didn't. Anyways, let me just stop this.